Hello and welcome back everyone to the next episode on SAP BTP learning series with anubhavtrainings.com. In our last session, we talked about the concept of building core data services using Olingo framework with the help of SAP BTP where we are using the BTP platform and Java programming model to develop core data services. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the use of application router in BTP. What is the practical use case of using application router? What the application router is? And can we see the use of application router with a real time example? So when we develop applications, which are SaaS application in SAP BTP platform, we have multiple microservices. So let's say you design one microservice using Java, one using Node.js, one using HTML5, and maybe some other microservices. So your application is not a monolithic application, rather it is a microservice based application, which is built using small, small services. Now the problem comes is when you have multiple services, the first problem comes is inter-service communication, because you would like to perceive the whole application as one, single logical unit yes so how can we make sure that our entire application work in synchronization of these microservices so we need to synchronize and exchange information between the microservices that's our first challenge the second challenge is since we have multiple microservices here each microservice will produce one url so this microservice will, will produce let's say url1 second one produce url2 third one produce URL three and fourth one produce URL four. So we have now four URL, but when it comes to our end user, we don't want to confuse our end user with so many URL. Our application should be accessible with a single entry point. Yes, with a single entry point, this should be just one URL through which all the parts of the application should be accessible. Yes, that is what we want to achieve. And in order to achieve this, we need someone who can orchestrate, who can synchronize services, plus also provide a single entry point for our user. So in SAP BTP Cloud Foundry, there are two types of application routers. One is managed app router and another is unmanaged app router or application managed app router. So in the current context, we are talking application managed app router, which is nothing but a Node.js application which is deployed in SAP BTP, which serves as a single entry point for our application microservices. So I have a practical use case for this thing. Apart from that, App Router also does a lot of works like redirecting to access UAA, transferring and passing the job token to the microservices, also allowing us to do integrations. So a lot of benefits does it provide. If you would like to see the complete detailed implementation of App Router, and understand end-to-end -end depth of BTP concepts, please feel free to subscribe our course on SAP Business Technology Platform. You can find the link of that course in the description of this video. Having said that, let's move on and see a practical application of App Router. So I will show you my BTP account now. In my BTP account, I have implemented an application router. So when I switch to my SAP BTP account, you can notice that I have an app router. This is the single entry point for the business to access my entire application. So our user, we will just give one URL of the app router. Now this router is routing to other microservices. So I have a Java application, Java based application with O data service. So this is one microservice. The second one is I have a node based microservice, which is here. So what I do is I will say on my app router, if I say slash Java, the system will point to the Java microservice on the app router. When I put slash node app, then it will point to my Node.js application. So single entry point for all the sub microservices. So if I try to access my Java application directly, system will prevent that access. Let me show you that. So I have prevented using this, the cloud security access to my microservices. So if I try to access directly any microservice, system will prevent that access. So let me open this and you can see it is preventing. So HTTP 401 unauthorized, I'm getting that. So 
I have prevented all the access of child microservices and all the access will be through the app router only. So we open the app router and now we access this URL for the app router. The first thing it will do is it will ask user to authenticate uh, themselves. Yeah. So it has redirected us to the SAP IDP where I will now enter my user ID for Cloud Foundry with SAP IDP. So default is the SAP IDP, but we can also configure our own identity providers. So let me just click on sign in. And now it is authenticating my user. And once the authentication is complete, it is going to redirect me to the application router. So application router, I'm also serving a Fury application there. So you can see the Fury application over here. And we have this vendor management application, which we built during our end-to-end -end BTP training, which has all the data, which is all the data. So this is my static resource endpoint, which I'm serving. So we can also insert new records over here quite easily. And now what I'll do is I will just go and try to access my Java endpoint. So I say Java slash vendor to access my Java endpoint. So I can use my same URL, which is my app router URL to access my Java endpoint with the same application route. So one thing you might have noticed that it is not loading the data. The data is not loading because this application is based out of HANA database. And in my BTP account, we have also created a HANA cloud instance. And currently the instance is actually stopped. So I just start uh, my instance of HANA cloud, which is now starting. And in just about few seconds, you will also see once my HANA system starts, I will be able to get the data as well. So on my next refresh, you can see the data is now loaded. I can also create new records on my Fury app. So let me just put Anubhav trainings. Anubhav. And I can just click on save. So a new record has been inserted now. So this way I have my application fully working. And to test my microservice, which is going to serve the O data, I will use slash Java. The moment I put this endpoint, it will go to my Java microservice. And I have a O data service with the name Anubhav SVC. And of course, this is currently not authorized. Maybe I just check the vendor data. So you can see I have got the vendor data. Similarly, I have a Node.js service. So I can say Node, enter. And you can see I have got a node response from the node microservice. I also have vendor data from the node where I'm getting the data from a third party MongoDB database in the node.js. And when I access uh, vendors.json, it will also give me the data for vendors from Mongo database. So this is the Mongo database data coming from my node application. So basically the same beginning endpoint, the same URL, but different different microservices i'm able to route and get the corresponding data out of the node.js or java or maybe any other microservice which you might have built so the moral of the story here is we have got multiple microservices and to do all the inter-service communication we are using a application managed application router so this is the main purpose of why we use application router in sap btp software as a service or SaaS applications i hope you enjoyed this introduction video of why we need application router in sap btp for more interesting videos like this please feel free to subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified to the most interesting and important components of sap btp development thank you so much see you in the next episode goodbye